I'm back. I'm stronger than ever, but I'm going to need to be. Hello, my name is Toby Guard, and welcome to the Player Tomb Raider Underworld special. Thanks, Toby. Yes, we felt it only right to give Lara's latest our full attention. We visit developers Crystal Dynamics to find out exactly what they've done to gaming's greatest heroine and how they did it. The Olympic gymnasts who helped bring Lara to life attempt to woo me, as does the real Lara Croft. Hello. Welcome to Croft Manor. Oh, and we answer the question, what does death sound like? That's all in our Tomb Raider Underworld special. The basis for this story was, from the beginning, was to explore some of the Norse mythology. And uh, obviously we worked out what we could do in terms of uh, what, what kind of artifact to go after and what kind of um, pieces from the myths that we could pick on in order to create the story. But also it was important for us to build um, in some of, the, some of the motivations that Lara has, some of the reasons why she goes on these adventures, and try and tie up some of the um, story pieces that explain her past. All right, maybe Avalon is real, but just because some bad woman tells you your, your mother didn't die after all. I mean, look, I, I don't want to seem heartless, but this, this idea of your mom living in some Celtic underworld, it's a, it's a little bit mental, isn't it? I have no illusions that my mother is holding court in some mythical paradise, Alistair. I only want the truth, whatever it may be. The game starts out with Lara's mansion burning and um, that is kind of what draws you in trying to find out why the mansion is on fire. And then it cuts to previously about a week before and then she's in the Mediterranean on just one of her normal expeditions and she swims down so you're scuba diving, you're uh, doing underwater puzzles. Fights an incredible monster down there. I am as blind as it looks. What she finds is uh, Niflheim, which is one of the Norse underworlds. Thor, the Norse god of thunder. Whatever are you doing down here in Niflheim? And she discovers that. Uh, there's a lot of truth behind the myth uh, of Norse belief in the gods of Thor and Odin, and it sets her on a quest to go find Thor's hammer and uh, all of the other artifacts associated with it. It is the hero's journey, the classic legendary journey into the land of the dead to try and find your loved one. Very early on in pre-production, we came up with this philosophy that we call, what could Lara do? And the idea was, what would you as a player expect Lara to be able to do given her strength, her fearlessness, her reason for living? And by using that guiding star, that gave us the ability to figure out what new moves to give her. We would be able to balance walk on a beam. I, I can balance walk on a beam, and you'd think that Lara could do that. Yeah, defo. Anyways, this philosophy led the team to come up with a host of new moves for Lara. She can climb up on top of poles and jump off them. She can free climb on walls with her handholds. She can shimmy along very thin ledges. 
when it comes to uh, combat. She can split up her guns and shoot at multiple targets at the same time. She can generate adrenaline through attacking enemies that she could use to do these uh, adrenaline headshot moves. She also has new weapons. In addition to her usual suite, she now has a tranquilizer gun for people that uh, want to uh, put uh, animals to sleep rather than killing them all. She now has new gear items that she has at her disposal. She's got a sonar map. She has new capabilities to her grapple gun. So by coming up with all of these new abilities, we not only deliver on the expectations of what you would expect Lara to be able to do, but we made the game more intuitive so that people didn't have to memorize a lot of arbitrary game rules about what you could and could not do, where you could do it, where you couldn't do it. But what isn't new is the fact that you'll be doing some good old block shifting to solve puzzles. Well, it wouldn't be Tomb Raider without it. And as ever, you'll be spending a lot of time trying to figure out just what it is Lara's on about. Incredible. The carvings are clearly similar to early Germanic design, but this is far older than the 5th century, yet, strangely enough, more sophisticated. That's funny, I was thinking that just the other day. To create the animation for the cutscenes, the team rounded up a host of actors and stunt performers and headed to their local motion capture studio. In the director's chair was Lara's original creator, Toby Gard. Let's see. Action. <laughs> Rumour has it that to prepare for this super expensive shoot, Toby roped in anybody and everybody from the team to act out the scenes beforehand in the Crystal Dynamics store cupboard. Yes, yes. Yes, we well, I don't I don't tend to act out the scenes because I'm behind the camera, but um, the uh, <laughs> the animators do do act it out. Yeah. And the explosion. Yeah. Cool. And then and then that'd be it. Yeah. It depends who plays Lara on who is currently available during our little half acting sessions, but it could be anyone. Blokes. Yeah, but looks. Too. Not obviously when we do the actual motion capture for uh, for the game, but when we when we were just trying to work out how the scene should play out, then yeah, we all muck in and sometimes it could, it could be anyone. Toby's usual role is as an artist and story consultant. So how was it putting down the pen and taking up the director's megaphone? It's definitely a new experience being in the in a mocap studio and saying action and cut and all that kind of stuff and it's a wrap I was saying it's a wrap to people when I shouldn't be because it, it means everyone can go home right and I'd, I'd say that um, you know a scene would look like it was good and I'd go it's a wrap and everyone would go what really and I'd no 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 not really no I was confused but there you go we knew we wanted a, a foundation of believability of um, photorealism and uh, that involved going on location and doing some shooting. Yes, it's a tough life for your environment designer, going to some of the world's most exotic locations, including Mexico's Mayan ruins, shooting reference photos to be used by the game's artists. We really uh, like these column structures and we use them in the game. Um, so you can climb and jump over structures like this. It's a good reference for my artists to use, just simple layouts that the Mayans would use. It just provided great ledges for Laura to jump and grab to. The Mayans very frequently use these cylindrical columns in, in their architecture as, as decoration. And we included that in our levels as well. We used this style archway whenever an arch was represented in Tomb Raider Underworld. Yeah, for the sound of uh, ripping flesh and breaking bones, I use cracking walnuts, ripping celery, uh, slushing melons, and um, uh, cabbage being torn in half. This sound is actually made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 
about almost 20 layers. Each of them contributes to the whole. Um, here's an individual sound. Just that. A little pop. Here's uh, something a little beefier. This is a cracking uh, a coconut. Coconut shell being uh, smashed with uh, a wrench, actually. Now you're going to hear the sound of a lot of those different elements I played you mixed together. That sound I use often when Laura is what we call ragdolling, where she's bouncing off jagged uh, cliff, you know, at the bottom of jagged cliff when she falls and, and dies. That's one way to end a feature. Join us after the break when the real Lara Croft reveals her jewels to me. <laughs> Back to our Tomb Raider Underworld special. Still to come, Old Bones. Alison Carroll is the new face of Lara Croft. She demanded dinner with me. I begrudgingly accepted. Hello. Welcome to Croft Manor. When my brothers found out that I'd got the, the job as Lara Croft, they've just They've gone crazy. <laughs> so excited about the prospect of it. My um, the middle brother, he, uh, he he's like, oh, can we go out in case people recognise you? <laughs> it's very funny. Anyway, Alison Carroll is the girl next door who is now Lara Croft. And ever since she was unveiled, she's been subjected to millions of questions from geek boys wanting to probe the inner Lara. Oh goodness, how many interviews have I done? So many, so many. I can't even put a number to it. Well, she wasn't employed to count. Yes, being a trained gymnast, some would say she's perfectly equipped to be Lara Croft, but not Alison. In fact, she's taken an intensive course in triple A hard. I'm also going to be doing SAS training, a course in firearms and a crash course in archeology. span so hopefully I'll have all of the skills put together to bring Lara to life. Alison's first photos as Lara certainly brought her to life in more detail than expected. But for those still wondering how she got the job, well, we can reveal she has the number one must-have quality, an enormous desire to travel the world as Lara. My diary is just jam-packed, you know. I'm, I'm going to Australia this week. Uh, then to Singapore, Dubai, South Africa. Um, I'm then off to Brussels and Amsterdam, Italy, America. So I'm pretty much globetrotting, <laughs> just like Lara. Anyone else gone off, huh? Now then, our tryst was rudely interrupted by a photographer. Well, she's, she's really good. You know, I've shot her before and she, she knows what to do. Three, two, chin round to me, that's it there. Down in a bit, one, two, three, that's it. Chin, there. She gets into character really well. Good, there, 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 there. Good girl, hold on. Eyes to me. Uh, and uh, I was getting it, so as we went around, I managed to hide the chimney pots and the bits behind with a bit of column, as you do. It just takes it a while to get. Alison wanted to continue yeah. our intimate tryst, but she was pulled away again, this okay. time to take part in an archery competition with journalists. <laughs> oh, completely missed. Yeah, but it does to me, I want to get it right. It was at this point we glimpsed the steely determination that's at the heart of Alison Carroll. She was determined to fight back. Would she? Yes! Bullseye! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Two in the bullseye. And who else did? Uh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone off her. She had one more chance to redeem herself. She promised to do an intimate stage show just for me and 200 other journalists. Take it away, Alison. I'm waiting.
while we were at Crystal Dynamics headquarters, we were accosted by some of the more media-hungry members of the Crystal Dynamic design team, who said, film us now, or else. I'm Cam Yu, lead character artist, and I'm about to show you some of Lara's costumes and uh, model of the thrall. This is Lara's standard outfit for Tomb Raider Underworld. She looks good from this distance, but however, if you move in, and you take a look at the detail on her, you, you'll still see the detail. There's no loss of, of detail there. Yep, no loss of detail there. This is for colder weather, obviously. She's got the fur collar and the fur cuffs. Yeah, very important, that collar and cuffs matching. And this one is Lara's wetsuit. We had to put extra accessories on her for this uh, outfit, like the goggles and the, and the uh, breathing apparatus. Four times as many polygons as the last Lara model. They even modeled the inside of her mouth. But the most important part of the model? The eyes. If you take a close look at her eyes, you'll actually see that the uh, specular highlight rolls over top the iris. The iris is actually concave slightly. It gives her that extra dimension in her eyes. So we were very particular about how much detail we put into her. This is probably the most detailed model we've ever uh, created for a video game. Hi, I'm Primo Navidad, lead animator for Tomb Raider Underworld, and I'm about to show you how we use motion capture to bring Lara Croft to life. Yes, though motion capture may be older than Madonna, amazingly this is the first game in the series where the team resorted to motion capture to bring Lara to life. In fact, over 2,000 motions were captured. So this is a new feature that she can do in the game, which is a, the whole balance beam mechanic. So this is what we get directly from the studio. And we also have the actor do it a couple different times just to make sure we get what we want. I took that long file and cut it down to a loop. Uh, what makes it so powerful is that I can easily manipulate each file to make it uh, suit our needs better. After we complete this stage, we then export it out into our game environment where we could test it in game. So here is what the balance beam looks like. And because of test level, you can see that it can be a little bit buggy. And if it looks good in here, then we know we finished our job. When we motion captured for Laura Croft, we scoured everywhere for talent and we couldn't find one person to fill the shoes. We actually used at least three uh, Olympic caliber gymnasts. Each brought a different side of Laura that we needed. One was a better actress than the other two as far as uh, body language. The other one was very good at gun posing and we had one who was just a incredible gymnast so we used her for a lot of the stunt stuff. For this one, we actually had the actor like 10 feet in the air with a harness standing on top of a, a bar. That was with no harness. We had a five foot high box with a little bit of a trampoline in front of him and we just told him to try to get over it as quick or as stylish as you can. So when I said action, I kind of embraced it a bit and uh, the actors appreciated it. So I would be, and action. And poser. No, Primo really did have an important role to perform on the set. One habit that I needed to break them of is after they would do a really awesome Lara Croft flip move, at the end they really wanted to do their and done, which, uh, I don't know, maybe they're waiting for a score or something, but uh, we broke them of that habit after two days of uh, rehearsals. And thus ended the career of some of America's brightest young gymnastic talent. That's almost it for our Tomb Raider special. Before we go, though, over to Ollie for a quick walkthrough. Lara's arrived at coastal Thailand on the trail of some ancient Norse ruins. Uh, what they're doing in Thailand is a bit of a mystery, but before she can investigate, she's got to get up there, and that's going to require a bit of free climbing, one of her new skills. 
can see her doing now. She can hop onto this ledge. And she can do a, a shimmy walk, which is another new skill. Just edges along like that and can jump off. Head on up the steps. dangerous. She can't stand on that so she slides down and from this ledge we can jump up and grab the pole. Another of her new skills is she can stand on poles and balance. reached a big gate which we're going to have to climb over so we'll do a chimney jump up here that's another new skill jump across to that ledge jump back across now shimmy across the top here and the camera pulls back to show the scale of the structure it's pretty big fall from here won't kill her but it will hurt round to the front or you can jump up again leap across that bit and continue to edge our way over to the left before we can jump up and climb over to the right and at the top here we'll see a beautiful Thai temple we'll actually this game next week, but for now, we're out of time. Ta-da!